What happens when a world-class nutritionist uses blood panels, cellular biology, and fact-based science to create and monitor healthy eating plans with supplements for her clients? Everyone wins. Welcome to Power on Your Plate with Haley Pomroy, an educational experience that gives you both the actionable and practical tools you can use every day to get your health, weight, and life back on track. All right, everybody in this amazing community, I'm going to kind of geek out a little bit today. I have the honor. We have the honor. I have the pleasure. Um, goosebumps. I have chills. We are going to get to spend the next uh, 45 minutes or hour or so with one of the most amazing, incredible, best doctors, physicians, practitioners, healers in the entire world, Dr. Jackie Fields. Jackie, I... I, I, I know that our whole community gets it. I get it from the tip of my head to the bottom of my toes, how lucky we are to have this time with you. And I just thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Haley. I am super grateful to be here and we've had a long journey together. So this is a great full circle for us. And thanks for letting me join. We have had a, a long journey together. Um, we were talking a little bit about you know, when I first came into nutritional practice and uh, you came into your practices, you are dual boarded, which means primary care physician, but also boarded in integrative medicine, which encompasses functional medicine, botanicals. And I think something that's super, super impressive to me is also nutrition and human biology. There is so much knowledge that you're bringing to this table and my community is kind of geeking out right now and I, we have got a ton of questions that everybody wants to ask you and so let, let's like just start let's get everybody acquainted a little bit here first do you remember how we first met well it was here in Fort Collins as you were really starting your business and I was really starting my business I feel like we were just starting to grow up. Um, I think we both had some really big dreams and I love that they blended around food and food is medicine and that we really needed to be teachers on this avenue. So it's been fun to watch you really take that and run. Um, I do think that's the essence of my practice is, is always coming back to the basics about food is your your first start of healing and educating on those lines. So I've loved that we've grown up blending those concepts um, and realizing and teaching, you know, people about, um, you know, we are what we put in, we are what we put on, we are what we think. So if it was in Fort Collins, we are talking um, in the 90s. <laughs> The, I don't even know, you remind me, but I think I was in training. So I want to say, maybe could it have been 93, 94, something like that? I think so. I think, I think kind of during that time, I had started before anybody kind of coined the term, an integrative clinic. And I think the residents, some of the residents were coming in. And I think um, I think it was Mike Tobin, Dr. Tobin, that maybe introduced us. And, you know, I've always had, probably like a lot of people in my community, just having had an autoimmune disorder and really struggled with health, I've had um, really been in awe of the physicians that have been around me that have, you know, taken this huge body of education and really put the patient back in in centric and, and the body and how the body works. And I think that's kind of why we jived like right away was I was, you know, she's bright, she's intelligent, she's, you know, has phenomenal education, but there's this wisdom about you that, that I've experienced both in my personal health and why I'm always begging you to sneak maybe a client of mine in or something and, and texting and begging and pleading and trying to coerce because I know your practice is is slammed and it's it's virtually impossible um, to get someone in. But I think the, the biggest thing is there's this, this and I, I want, I'm really interested actually to know where this came from. There's something that you bring to the table, which is just this reverence for the human body as a, as a doctor, as a physician, that 
is missing in in 99% of the practitioners out there right now. And, and I'm not sure why, but you know, I felt it personally. I felt it with my family going through health issues. And it's what I hear over and over and over again from my community is, is there something missing oftentimes? And and watching the this the very special doctors that are that are true masters like yourself, what there has to be something personal that it that that drives you because because it's not easy. It it takes way more time, energy, effort, financial resources to be the kind of practitioner that you are. Is there something personal that drove you down this path? Yeah, that's a loaded question, but yes, I um, I feel like my path was pretty guided, and uh, it started um, at a young age when I was in high school. My mom actually had a an acoustic neuroma, which is a benign tumor on the eighth cranial nerve, and so brain. And uh, she lived with my dad, a surgeon, and all the friends were physicians. And um, it was kind of the classic story where everybody said it was all in our head. Um, and she's going through menopause oh. and they didn't really hear it. So I think that's a, a number one story is they didn't really hear it. Um, she, and literally she had a tumor on her ear and lost her hearing. So unheard. So there's all these symbologies. I always think the body does, which is fascinating. Um, so, you know, this might've been the same tumor interesting that Van Gogh had, but Ooh. it's a yes where you're extremely creative so she wrote she was um italian so english wasn't her first language and she started to write exquisite poetry and the person even though she was surrounded by physicians the person that was astute to it was she was in school at the time getting a master's was somebody that was looking at her writing and um so one other physician that was trained in Syria, in irradiology, eventually, years have gone by, he looks at her eyes. Uh, MRIs are not developed yet. So iridology? Iridiology, yes, looking in the eyes. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. Iridiologist. But he's got this weird integrative training. Yes. And he looks in her eyes and says, you, you have a brain tumor. But, but we're talking, we've gone years. Wow. Years of it being discounted. Because I think the biggest thing is it's unheard. You're not always heard. Uh. Is, is broken because everybody's moving too fast and they've divided people into parts. And that doesn't work. That right. actually doesn't work. So, so a primary care is a systems viewer. So we never divide people into parts. And then an integrative doctor took it way further and said, not only you, not only can you break people into parts, but you have to see how they're even inter interacting into their environment. So this guy looks in her eyes and finally says, I'm very worried you might have a, a brain tumor. And, and that was the start of her getting a CAT scan, thank goodness. And it was very large. The tumor was very large. And it led me to find a book by uh, Dr. Bernie Siegel, yes. who wrote Love Medicine Miracles. So he was a Yale oncologist who was really the start of visualization. So he was working with Candace Pert, who wrote Molecules of Emotion. And he started to prove uh, tremendous work he was doing in the 1970s. And he was proving so where, where, how old were you at this point when you started? I, so I wrote him when I was, she had just gotten diagnosed. And fortunately, she went to an incredible surgeon at Mass General, 12-hour surgery, tumor removed, she does well. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I find his book and I write him and I said, where would I learn what you're talking about? Because, Were you in medical school at the time? No, no, I, I was I was just starting college. Okay. And, and integrative medicine, yep. And integrative medicine hadn't started. Yes, it no. 
but he was the beginning of it. Him and Patch Adams and Deepak Chopra and Christian Northrup and Andy. Andy. Yeah. So what happens is I write him at 17 or 18. He writes me back instantly. I still have the letter, purple pen, incredible story. And he, and I'm just trying to understand how do you find a different view? Like my mom, had she been with somebody probably listening so what he writes about is very young he he looks at the people's dreams and their artwork and their writings and he really what he really does is spend time with patients yes which is what we need we have to have a paradigm shift right so by the time i'm 20 or 21 he's starting the first meeting for the american board of holistic medicine yes and president and and what I think comes out of the blue, but I realize he just saved my address, is an invitation to the first meeting. And so I'm not even in med school, I'm debating med school, and I go to the meeting in Seattle. And at the meeting, so I'm the youngest one there, I'm like, they're all doctors in practice ready to change the paradigm of medicine. And Pat in your under, and in your under, in your and I'm an undergrad. I'm debating medical school. Got it. So you're nutrition and biology at that time? Yes. 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 And but more important, I'm excited about what he's talking about, which is mind body medicine. Right. And developing with Candace Pert that when people have a thought, your thought doesn't just stay here. Your thought is fully into your brain, into your body. And you have receptors on every organ of your body. And that's what Candace Pert proved and wrote yes. cultures of emotion. So now when you have a thought, every single organ of your body hears it. So he applies that to cancer patients and he does visualization for his cancer patients. And he's winning like his his patients across the board are doing better. Yes. And so he invites me to this meeting. I'm like 20 years old. And I show up and these guys are like my dream come true of showing me that medicine could go a different route. We and these guys could be my mentors. Yes. And that's what happened. And so it dawns on them. And they he makes me get on stage. I'm 20. <laughs> in this crowd of doctors and says, you know, it's not her fault what's about what's going to happen to her in medical school. And I think it dawns on them that they have to help the student before the student is tainted. Yes. They have to mentor students. And, and I was in the right place at the right time. And so they all offer to be my help. And so I sign up for medical school knowing that I have a different way of thinking. And I have a tribe of mentors that really is going to help me be the doctor I want to be, even though the mainstream course says you can never practice that way. So did you find when you were, sorry to interrupt, did you find when you were in medical school that the majority of your, the other students didn't have this kind of a support system? Yeah, but I brought it to my medical school. So and fortunately, because I had met them all, I brought them as lecturers and I started a little integrative um, class. And they promised me as my mentors that they would help me get through it basically. And my main mentor was Andy Weil. And Andy yeah. Weil hadn't created his fellowship or anything at that point. Um, and my fascination probably with what Andy Weil was doing was Andy Weil had traveled the world and was writing more about indigenous healers, which is something that fascinated me and led me to travel the world through med school and residency. Because what I realized, I, I wasn't clear on what I was doing until years later, but I realized that, that the tribal healers never separated mind from body and they used plants. Right. And, and even, even pharmacologically, I mean, a, the majority of the research comes from, you know, botanicals, you yes. know, whether it's, you know, Valium coming from Valeriana root or Valerian root, there's, there's, there's somewhere and, and us as 
patients are, are, are constantly in my community. We talk a lot about being um, left in this vortex of the divide between the human body and human medicine. And, and somewhere along the lines, you know, even now I'm seeing, and I was so, you know, again, we've been practicing a long time. Integrative medicine wasn't a branded uh, licensure or, or certification or, you know, anything at the time. And what integrative medicine meant was more what we used to call in the olden days, my olden days, was alternative medicine, right? right. So right. if you if you did any kind of, you know, a great friend of mine would say, because I was into herbs and homeopathy and obviously targeted nutritionals, and, and they would say, oh, that voodoo that you do, um, you know, I'm going to have an antibiotic and a steroid. And I, and I, it was, it was just this really weird shift when I first started where these guys were also phenomenal mentors and, and, you know, uh, blazing trails in this bringing back what true medicine really is and taking away the term of alternative, I guess, is yeah. it. And, and I think integrative helped my, sometimes I have a beef with integrative because I feel like there's a lot of practitioners out there that, that, you know, their version of integrative medicine is let's, let's sell a bunch of stuff to people and you can bill for a bunch of labs. I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've accompanied many clients to very expensive practitioners and I went, whoa, wait a minute, you know, we still, hello, there's a patient here in the door. We don't need a cookie cutter natural approach. Like we don't need a cookie cutter pharmacological right. approach. So, so I think there's, there's a, a curiosity in the, the diagnosticians of, I think you coined it perfectly of, of that listening. And yeah. I think that, that, what you went through with your your mother and i i know personally that you come from this lineage of phenomenal surgeons and physicians and i mean you know it's um it's ingrained in every cultural cell of your body to have that uh doctor intellect and i think that experience i don't know gave gave you the blessing of 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 really understanding um, the magnitude and the impact of, of not listening. Right. Yeah, and and yeah. what can happen. And, and, and like for myself, you know, having been diagnosed with ITP and autoimmune, a blood disorder, you know, that's why the chemistry and the blood chemistry and the biochemistry of the body became a lifeline for saving, you know, my existence, but it, it's just so it's just like this passion that I blind I'm blinded by the passion of going through the world saying, you know, it's it's the toxins that we're exposed to. It's how the homotoxicology, how the human body deals with toxins. It's how the body eliminates toxins and the systems and the functions of it. And and Jackie, if I, I, I you and I could spend decades yeah. together and that's what I'm planning on. <laughs> Um, but there's there's something that I think totally fascinates me with your practice, and and I again I work with I'm blessed to work with a lot of different um, physicians, but really that you embrace because this is a battle that I fight sometimes when I'm advocating for my patients, my clients who are their doctor's patients. You really embrace the exposure that we have to toxins and how that affects the systems and even further the the organ the largest organ in the body the skin and we talk a lot about detoxing 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 getting stuff out and you know you i i hope you're okay with me talking about this but you have sacred skin which is a skincare line it is totally different than a skincare line if you don't mind me saying that um it is <laughs> probably addressing our number one exposure to what I am concerned with about obesogens, thing that, things that make you, are, are known to be things that create obesity in the body that stimulate fat cell proliferation, carcinogens, things that are known to create cancer, toxins yeah. that are absorbed by the thyroid. And so I just yeah. want to talk a little bit about when you, when and why, why you became like blinded like myself by the passion of saying wait a minute guys yeah what we're putting on our body is killing us literally yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I came about making a skincare line uh, sort of in the reverse fashion. I, I wasn't doing it for beauty. I was doing it for health. Right. And as an integrative doc, the premise is uh, chronic disease is fueled by either being nutrient depleted, toxic, chronically inflamed, or maybe fighting viral infections or infections. So that's kind of a... I, can, I, can, I, can I just, I want to write this down. Nutrient yeah. deficiency. Say again. Nutrient deficiency. I want toxic my community overload. to really hear this. Nutrient yeah. deficiency, toxic overload, chronic inflammation, which chronic inflammation. Are, yeah, and there can be an underlining chronic infections. Got so it. Those, those are the four core. Like, like if a patient walks in, you know, I'm going to be looking around at that underlying root cause for everybody, right? So the problem is, is I was in practice, I feel like our children's always inspire us, and I yes. was pregnant when I started the current vision of my practice in gardens. So in utero, I feel like my daughter made me get very clear about multiple things. Um, so while she was in utero, I was going to start my natural pharmacy. And the point of the natural pharmacy was to give access to patients to high end supplements, nutraceuticals that are regulated because it's a very unregulated market in this country. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? Did you guys so hear that? That's from yeah. Dr. Jackie Fields. That's why yeah. I didn't want to go into that industry. And I went into yeah. it like for your same reason. Yeah. I wasn't going to take what was offered out there. I wasn't going to give my clients what was offered out there. It's it's right. not only unregulated, what 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 is being sold is it, it's not even what it says on the label. It's it's crazy. We could go Yeah. So the same thing about skincare. Average woman puts 12 to 15 products on a day. I was caring for lots of breast cancer patients or what I call hormone-based cancers. Yes. And I would talk to them about how we're going to deal with chemo if we're even going to do chemo. How are we going to help their body detoxify? Right. I would talk to them about food and, and you know, all the premise you teach, which is food is medicine. And look, we need to keep you strong. And, you know, here, let's talk about healthy nutrition. But then they go home and put 12 to 15 products on a day that they feel like wasn't going in. Again, unregulated industry. And because it's external, really, they felt like, well, this isn't going in my body. And I had to aggressively educate them that their products that they put on had to come out of their pantry. So can I, so you were just starting sacred skin and I've shared the clients, uh, with a lot of my community about, I had this one client that has lost over a hundred pounds. Now we were six months together. She did not lose anything. I, I always tell her what in the world were you thinking sticking with me? She was coming to see me, as you know, like every four to six weeks, we were modifying things. We were changing things. It was, it was obviously her body was extremely nutrient dependent and it needed time to replenish, but I will never forget this, this appointment. We did two things. We detoxed all of her cleaning products. We went yeah. through, I had her take pictures under her cupboards. We changed her paper towels. We detoxed all of her cleaning products and I could not, I was, I felt, I felt derelict in my job. I could not believe what she was putting on her skin. I yeah. had her change all a hundred percent over to sacred skin. And she's like, we are now we were, she, she's been a client of mine for a long time. It was back in Fort Collins days and she's still lost over a hundred pounds. It was flooding the body with nutrients, but it really wasn't until we got rid of her body could not release the toxins that she was being exposed to. And, and if you're dealing with weight right now, give your body a big, warm, juicy hug and thank it for saving your life because yeah. we store fat soluble toxins that we put on our skin if we yeah. can't eliminate them, and remember, the skin is where we eliminate, the breath is where we eliminate, the bowels are where we eliminate. 
if we can't eliminate it, our body creates trash bags in the form of adipocytes or fat cells. And so we have to not continue to dump on the body in order for the body, especially like you said, if you're dealing with hormone based hormones, the, the, yeah. In, in, and, and Jackie, you can speak to this way better than I can, but so many of the things in our skincare are what we call um, imposters, hormone imposters. So they will mimic hormones oftentimes, especially some of the anti-aging stuff. It's crazy. They will mimic your hormones and that can create such a disruption. We can have irregular periods. We can have, you know, um, fibrocystic breasts. I mean, we've seen all kinds. I, I, again, I'm, I'm feel like I'm preaching the choir here, but could you share with my community a little bit about how truly outrageous from a hormone perspective? Because the questions that I have from, from my community key, community were a lot about menopause, hot flashes, thyroid, definitely autoimmune like Hashimoto's. Um, and, and, and why, why should we be focusing on the skin when we're stuck or we're struggling? Right, right. So th those are great questions. I do um, always start with my patient who has any autoimmune disease or hormone disruptions by teaching them there are really known chemicals. Um, so I always give them what's called a no-no chemical list because we really do know, for instance, parabens are, you know, hormone disruptors. We yes. know tons of preservatives in, um, so I, I have a list of probably, and, and it, it'll be on my website too, where I always go, hey, these are out. So just like you give them a list. So, one one uh, second, guys, I'm going to post Dr. Field's website. We had a link to, and I will specifically give you the link to her website that has the no-nos list. And, and Jackie, can I just ask you a question? Cause I got to hear, um, you said like parabens are definitely, um, they mimic estrogens. Okay. So they mimic estrogens. So for, for my community, could you see increased belly fat with that? Could you see, okay. Yeah. Could how do you, you want to fatten an animal? Give them more estrogens. Yes. And you can't process the estrogen, i.e. liver is overloaded. Um, Absolutely, we will have more fat. So and even in the in the non-organic agriculture world, we use parabens uh -huh. to fatten to marble. Yeah. So that's really visceral fat, really hard to get at fat. So yeah. where would a person find this in their topical exposure? Like, is where are parabens most, normally? Most products, if they're not buying or being attentive, because nobody's watching out for them. If they're not buying and being attentive to a line that's uh, being conscious and non-toxic, which the environmental working group could probably help a patient understand that. I'm part of a Safe Cosmetics Act, um, so my business is, takes that oath, if you will. But somebody has to start to understand that. Just like you're teaching them about food, right? And you're teaching them how to shop, I, I take that a step further on how to shop for everything. Yes. Right. Because we're one planet. I mean, it, it, it's getting small. Right. It's it, 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 there isn't in a way there is no planet B. So we have to be thinking about this. And this is definitely what, why I'm getting louder about it, because our Earth is getting louder about it. So is it is it in like only in sunscreens? Is it in no 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 no? It's in uh, you will see paraffins in all sorts of moisturizers, all sorts of products, shampoos, conditioners, moisturizers. You know, if you think about all the things people are putting on, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, and then I don't know how many things they put on their face. You know, commonly it could so it really adds up fast. And if that's twelve a day for you know, you can think about a young girl, like, why are we going into, uh, uh, we're not necessarily going into menses sooner, but we are going into pre-puberty sooner. Yes. So they are doing this at nine because they're being fed these estrogen mimickers. So, so they'll have changes at nine years old. Yes. Um, so this and is we, happening. 
and women are having, you know, hellacious menopause, you know, right. growing up, my mom is a, a doctorate in Chinese and Oriental medicine and reproductive endocrinology. So we learned about, you know, periods and hormones and, and menopause can be this just beautiful time where your creative energy moves up in the body and how your, your heart is more hosted. And, and you know, that in Chinese medicine, they call it kidney chi moves into the heart and you have more fire and more passion and knowledge and wisdom in your brain and all of this stuff. And yet we have people that are just tortured, tortured yeah. by the symptoms yeah. of menopause. Um, yeah. whether it's, whether it's depression, anxiety, sleeplessness, weight gain, midsection weight gain. And, and so you're saying that one really easy thing to change is what we put on our bodies. So yeah. sacred skin is your line and, and I'm not going to, I, I very, um, neurotic about that type of thing. And so I use and have used and my kids, uh, you know, in college, they, it's, it's actually funny because my daughter's away in college now. And, um, that's why I was asking you, she uses, a lot of your products, but she, she was buying your her face soap for a lot of her girlfriends. And I said, here, let me give you, um, let me give you the website and you can let them and their mommies order face soap for them. <laughs> because I was going, why are you going through like five and six bottles of face soap, sweetheart? Um, That's so funny. My, uh, my daughter's doing the same thing in college. She's, she teaches it to them, yeah. which is that our children are teaching this already. It but, is. It funny, is. And, funny and and they know, and, and they, you know, they see, you know, they've always been so supportive of me and my health journey because, you know, they want to keep mom healthy for sure, but they've seen it in their own and they're so quick to help their, their friends. And, um, Dr. Fields, you have, you're going to be, we're going to share a, a coupon code that you're going to give just to our community. I will post that you guys, it's going to be FMD skin. Um, it's like 15% off if you do single bottles, but Dr. Field's team has put together like these kits. So it's a really no brainer what to use, when to use it. Um, and those are 20% off. So I, I'll list who, um, what I use and, and how I use it just so everybody kind of knows. But I, uh, so some of my clients, like there's, there's the serums and things. Some of my clients, I put my A and C on together. Um, some of my clients like to use it separate. So there's all kinds of great stuff that we'll, we will supply uh, my community, our community about that. I really, really, really wanted to um, share this. This is so important for me to bring solutions to our our community. And this is a big one. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what are the top three things that I can do to make a change in my metabolism? And the metabolism affects every aspect of the life of your life. And, and I'm going to now change it to four, Dr. Fields, because you you really, the nutrient deficiency, the uh, toxic overload, chronic inflammation, and chronic infection. And I just want to say that if there's chronic inflammation, it's usually because there's some aspect of toxic overload and nutrient deficiency. So you have to be able to handle what you're exposed to. We're an adaptive being. And the chronic right. infection, I think... Um, the stronger our bodies are, the more um, able we are to deal with acute infection and the more uh, able we are to inhibit or prohibit or prevent, excuse me, maybe uh, chronic infection or create some kind of a new homeostasis with chronic infection. I've had, we've had people that have had to right. make that right. internal peace with it maybe being you know, chronic Epstein-Barr virus or things like that. How, how do you have a, how do you thrive under that environment and not just survive? I want to ask you though, I've been using your product for a long time um, because I'm a, I'm a die hard about, you know, it's like the Keep liver and yeah. the skin. And I had part of my autoimmune, especially when I was younger, I had chronic eczema. Um, you know, eczema, they called it systemic eczema. I was on 60 milligrams of prednisone. I was on oh. Imurin, fluctuated between Imurin and Celsept, which are anti-rejection uh, drugs typically, but they're immunosuppressive. Um, and, and I was, it was crazy. The steroids and the topical stuff, this, this skin was scarred, which I have, you guys 
I have eyeshadow on, but you can see I have no scars. This is from the serum. So I had eczema scars here. Dr. Fields, I know you're the one that told me to use the serum. So you probably know this, but if you guys can see, I'm showing my face for those of you that are listening. I had quite a bit of scarring and discoloration from having years of eczema. And I used your A and C serums and that was phenomenal for me. Um, I have to say when I was younger, I might have used anything to make that scarring go away as I became educated and, you know, I have this blind passion for a desire for health and wellness. I'm so glad that it's that that it's making me healthy, not just uh, butamous. So so but I wanted to know, like, you've really you you've really gone um, you have you have a. Uh, Healing Gardens, a, a healthcare center, an integrative center, a living art center. You have a medicinal pharmacy. <laughs> you have a nonprofit organization, Healing Gardens. But right now you are going like gangbusters on the sacred skin. I, why now? Yeah, great question. Because I have had this since, like I said, my daughter was in utero sort of inspired. Let's, let's create this for my community. So I felt obliged 17 years ago to create this for my patients. But I'm feeling a little guilty to not bring this to the bigger world because the bigger world needs to understand um, this. And I feel like I, in my menopausal years, need to be an educator on this. Yes. Uh, it's pretty obvious that we've got a lot of, of issues going on in the world and toxins and fires and pandemics and I mean we're struggling and we as a country should get we have buy power and as a country we should get really picky about companies that are going to be sustainable that are going to take oaths that are going to do the right thing that are going to do clean sustainable practices and and right. that's what our business is and it just feels unfair not to teach the larger world right now and not to literally gift it back out. Um, I've had 17 years of fun and experience <laughs> and it works and you know, it's been a word of mouth business and, and now I just feel like it's, it's time to protect a larger community. Can I add one thing to that? So, because we are, our community is kind of the place where people go for answers. And sometimes, you know, I might have the answer in my back pocket and other times the answer is clear across the world. Um, you taught me one thing that I have carried with me for all of my life is to always have a clinic without walls. And yes. you always told me, you always told me to, if you, to, when you come across the moment when you don't have the answers, that's the most beautiful time you're ever going to experience as a practitioner because it's the moment of growth and it's yeah. the moment of expanding your heart and being open to options and solutions for the, for the whole reason I get up in the morning and do what I do for myself is to help other people achieve their health, the health that they desire. And one thing that's happening right now that is that, you know, there's times where I, I turn all my microphones off and the cameras off and I go on these private rant, rants because I think they're a little maybe too caustic for everybody to hear. But I'm going to go a little bit there right now. I am extremely frustrated that a lot of companies are getting bought out by large pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical country, companies and are completely adulterating the natural uh, uh, product community right now. So skincare and nutraceutical supplements are getting hit the most. There are four brands that I can talk about right now that I used to think were pretty darn yeah. cool that have gotten purchased by large companies and you turn it around the same label, the same brand, the same, you know, juicy promise on the front and you turn it around and you label read and it is heart breaking. And, yeah. and so this is my, my comment to our community that's listening right now is if, if you're not willing, if, if Dr. Fields is not willing to put it on her belly when she's pregnant with Sophia, don't use it. And that's when I did the nutraceutical thing. It is not what I set out to do in life. It would have been the last thing if someone was going to predict my future 
or, or chart my journey. Mm-hmm. I got so frustrated with even great companies. And, and I know you and I have used them all great companies that I would turn the bottle around and they would have changed their protein source. And, and, and I would have a reaction or my clients would say all of a sudden they're getting, you know, gassy or tummy aches or things like that. And you lose control over that. And they've put in stuff that is not even tested for lead or cadmium or and 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 it's and it's it's maddening it's frustrating i just had a client that used an l glutamine that threw away 17 bottles because a company that came out and has donated a ton of money to the natural health world just got bought out and changed all of their sourcing and i turned the bottle around and i was just i, I just was like oh you know I, I guess you and I are not retiring anytime soon. <laughs> so, so in the skincare world and even in a lot of these large brands, you know, it's easy. And this is kind of what I did too. I, I said, okay, I'm going to, I, I am in clinician first. I'm in practice first. And the people that come through my door, as long as my name's on that door, I'm going to never do less for them that I would do for myself, my mom, my sisters, and my children. And that's yeah. my personal commitment. And then I said, okay, how to use the word guilt, how guilty do I feel that it's not accessible to other people? But it's it's hard and it's a struggle. And so I really encourage my community um, to support your business to support sacred skin. It will change their lives. It will make a huge impact from, from a health perspective. And you've done all the work for all of us, which is huge. And, 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 um, it's huge because, because I know if it's being given just like me, if, if it's being given to your daughters, if it's being applied to your skin, if you're giving it to me and knowing my health issue, I know that I feel um, privileged to have you on and talk about it to our community. Um, can I ask you a couple questions that our community is dying to hear about? Sure. Okay. I want to take, I want to interject just one thing. When you said, if, if it feels safe to put on your belly, I take it a step further. Um, typically I feel like you should be able to eat it. Right. So it's, it's food for your skin face. It's, it's, clean, no chemicals. So I want your community to take it that far. If they can't, I always say to a patient, if you can't afford whatever, certain products in the line, whatever, I'd still rather you walk into your pantry and that's what you put in your skin. So it it is food and and people should take this serious. We are getting more and more toxic. We We have started to turn around as a population where we're not living as long as our parents. This has happened already, and it's about toxic overload. So I do want your community to start hopefully adopting more than the food problem. Yes. It's it's really, there's a lot of layers to how they can control their health. You know, what's their thoughts? What do they put on? You know, it's not, it is food, Haley, and that will be always mine in your premise. But there's, but people are um, complex. (laughs) And even their thinking can be toxic. So I just want them to adopt all of it. It's very empowering. And that's what we're really doing. That's what me and you really want to do with patients. We want them empowered. We realize they have choice. They are not victims in this and they need to, this is their moment to take their power back. So I just wanted to voice that. It is. It is. And when you talk about this is their moment, we talk a lot about in our community about, about, I want to fortify you and strengthen you. It's almost as if I want to make you strong enough to, to go to battle. Right. But the whole goal is to not be in an environment where you have to battle. Yeah. Where, where what you're using your hard earned dollars to purchase, if that's cleaning product, if that's skincare, if that's food, if that's for the love of God, air fresheners, don't yeah. buy trash bags that have Febreze in them. They will make you sick. 
period, yeah. exclamation mark, Febreze, come and get me, sorry. But yeah. things like that will make you sick. Things that you are putting in your laundry and then you apply to in your clothes will make you sick. And it might not be one dose, it might not yeah. be, but it's accumulation. And when you talk about people not being a good state of health, we actually have a service that we do where, where we go in and kind of detox or assess a house, right? And and we go in and we say like, okay, and it's crazy, crazy when you see what's going on. You mentioned the fires. Right now, there are a lot of fires. When structures burn, it's not just the fire retardant. It's all the raid that, you know, the ant spray and the bug spray and the leftover paint and the, the Freon in your, your, your refrigeration devices. All of those things we're breathing in, we're being exposed to. All of those things are so hard on our bodies and our environment. And the one thing that I'll have people notice, what is flourishing right now? What is doing incredible right now? What has the number one growth in our nation right now? is real estate as it pertains to hospitalization. So we are building more medical facilities than anything else. And yeah. that is not for the well, that is yeah. for the not well human being. There yeah. is no money to be made by people in you being well. There is a lot of money to be made in you staying unhealthy. And so I advocate that a lot. And, and having you here, I wanna ask, the goal is, is that we're coming in to see you for an annual physical, maybe a pap smear, maybe some labs. And we just kind of want to go over what our community calls our health wish list, how we can be like even, you know, outrageously healthy. If I were to send a client into your office, what we, we have these forms that my clients fill out. It's called a request for care. Uh, we call it a Dear Dr. Sanders letter because I put it together for a doctor in Ohio, a client of mine for a doctor in Ohio. And it just yeah. kind of adopted that name. But what would you hope that the patient would walk in the door with? Would you like to have them come in with a list of their health wish, what they wish for, their top symptoms, what would be the top three things that would make your job easier in getting them to the mecca of being outrageously healthy? Well, I, I like, a, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm a primary care, so I can see any problem. I do like a patient coming in, whether it be an autoimmune disease, a hormone issue. I see obviously a lot of women, women go to physicians, women want to be educated and they, want to be proactive and so they go to doctors more for education i do feel i'm an educator so if a patient came in and is just willing to learn and get empowered and be less of a victim that's my kind of patient i am going to take them to the next level because i'm going to put the power in their hands i as a primary care you know primary care is might send somebody to a specialist here, there, and whatnot, but still, mm -hmm. after they go to a specialist, I mm -hmm. tell them, look, me and you know more about your whole system mm -hmm. than that guy who just looked at your heart or that woman yeah. who just looked at your heart. So you have to remember, we're still gonna take the information and uh, uh, decide ourselves as teammates. Mm -hmm. So I'm their teammate, I'm their educator, and really, I'm here to take their power back. So medicine is very um, victimizing and um, separatist. And yes. that is not, that's not immigrant. That is not what I would do. Um, so I don't even want them to separate from their beliefs. So yes. that's the other thing. So a patient will come in and I, I actually have to understand, and, and, and I would probably say that's what Bernie Siegel was doing, is what but what's your belief system? Because I got to work within your belief system. Right. Because that is really who you are and how you connect to the larger world. So when they present themselves as your patient, you want, and this is, guys, this is from the doctor's perspective. You want them to be open to education. You want them to have an open mind. You want them to not slide into the victim role which is so perpetrated or 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 yeah is that the right word which is so foundational in traditional in medicine, medicine in medicine yeah in medicine now, right. at my clinic though but because that's where i have time now yes. your poor community doesn't 
always find that. That's the that's the problem. Is how how do we empower them to find that doc that gives them the time of day that listens to who are they? Yes. And what do they wish for? And when they walk into an office and they're not feeling that way. So for example, I actually went with a very, a family member of mine into the emergency room. Um, and we had said, you know, there was obviously, I don't go to the emergency room lightly. And I was trying to be really kind to the doctor and sweet. <laughs> I was a little, you know, I, I can get very like, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it. But, yeah. I, you know, I said, well, I'm very concerned about X, Y, and Z. She had, you know, tremendous swelling um, at the ankle. And I said, you know, I, I really would like you to run some of the cardiovascular, make sure she's not in congestive heart failure. This is, and, and he says, well, I'm just going to give her some steroids and see if we can get the swelling down. I said, but I would really like, <laughs> you know, she has Hashimoto, she's autoimmune, she's pro-inflammatory. Can you at least run a CRP, you know? And he says, well, I'd only be doing it for your and her benefit. And I, I uh, yeah. <laughs> all I could do to not lose my SHIT right there. And I said, oh, gosh, seeing as she's the patient, <laughs> I'm doing it for her benefit. You know, I'm not doing it for yours. You know, I mean, I was just, just like, I, I just wanted to, you know, I love my hair, so I didn't rip it out, but I really <laughs> wanted to. But, but what's so hard, it, and I love that you use the word empowered a lot. There is such a divide in the education that doctors have and the education that the patient has. And there's such a hierarchy in, 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 you know, and thank you for letting me just talk so candidly about it. So I'm talking on behalf of my community. There's such a hierarchy where, where, you know, doctors are really turned off right now because they said, oh, what did you Google it? You know, the, the, the Google educated patient walking in the door. Do you have a gem, uh, some wisdom, some knowledge that you can part with for my community that can help them like I, I do we fill out this form and we send it to the doctor's office ahead of time and we give the doctor a copy and we have a copy and we try to make it sweet and succinct and positive um but but i encourage my community to research what's going on with them before they walk in the door how can it be presented well first of all when do they know it's time to fire their doctor and is that okay of course you're hiring them they're your teammate and i think the beginning of our conversation was important which is about listening so when is it time when you don't have a listener or teammate is it hard to find Ooh. yeah i just got chills like that i'm sorry i that just that hit me to the core yeah it's i you're giving people permission dr fields right now something that that that's like the mother their mom or their father or somebody should have given them permission a long time ago yeah when you don't have someone that's listening to you and when you don't have someone that's a teammate that's on your team they don't have the same jersey on that's yeah. the lit test right there and, yeah. and coming from you and giving people that permission is 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 huge thank yes. you so yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to punctuate that. Yeah, yeah. So we're totally back to a paradigm shift. You know, unfortunately, right. I feel bad for physicians. They feel trapped. Yes. Um, and so they're, you know, they're doing six, 10 minute visits. They're actually hired. They're the artist with the knowledge. But unfortunately, they turned over their power and they're hired by corporate medicine now. I I've never done that. I never will do that. So what else could you do, physicians that aren't in that broken system? Because the system's broken. And this is where I give the patient the power. They have five power. They're hiring the doctor. <laughs> Remember. Right. And so they could find that one that stepped out of the broken paradigm. It's scary for a physician to do that. I've never been in it, except in training. But I also went into medicine. I told you meeting those mentors that yes. show you don't have to go into that. And then I can think out of the box. I may never, uh, I, you know, I don't do 20. I do six. I right. probably operate like you. Right. Um, and that's very different day. And that means I have time to solve. So that's what they're looking for. But the truth is, the more they're looking for that, the more doctors there will be like that, right? Yes. They're creating the need. Um, so, so, so just like they're purchasing when they go, I tell my community, if you can't find what you need at your local grocery store, 
grab the manager and ask him for that. Because the thing the manager definitely wants to do is sell you something. And if yeah. he knows he's going to gain your business, even if yeah. he has to put the bread that you want or the paper towels that you want or the cleaning supplies that you want, even if he puts them in back for you or you order a case, ask for a case discount. I do that all the time, especially when yeah. I'm in smaller communities. I've been in Missouri and Kansas sometimes where I can't find stuff and I go get the manager. They all buy from the same places. And I said, look, right. we'll buy a head. I'd like a case discount. We'll buy a case. Yeah. But that then I start seeing some of those stores carrying it a little more regularly. So I yeah. think we are a consumer of medicine. We are not a victim Correct. of our illness and we are not a victim of the medical community, even though there is that patient doctor hierarchy, right? I, it's, I love what you said about the, the, that medicine is an art. It is an art. It is mm -hmm. an art. And it is a practice. <laughs> and I think that um, like dealing with um, that consumer mentality is is really, really Im important. And it, yeah. it is harder in smaller communities sometimes. A lot of my, you know, but I see it in New York. I see it in LA. I see it in Colorado, really engaging with a practitioner um, that they can, that they can bond with and have a relationship with is really, really hard. Um, I know that we've worked with a lot of other people that are looking at changing the financial paradigm also in medicine. Um, you know, to your point, it's, it's a scary place. And so understanding when you go in to see your physician, what their limitations are and being the best steward for your health as possible. Um, do it. I'd love to ask you a couple more questions. How are you feeling, yeah. Jackie, on things? Sure, I'm feeling good. Okay. Is there any things that you want to punctuate? Um, I'll think about it as you ask okay. a few questions. <laughs> so I, I just want to, my community asks me a lot how about how I feel about hormone replacement therapy. And um, I, th I know that some of how I feel has been uh, molded by individuals and being able to work with individuals like yourself. Um, you know, it, it is also molded though by the fact that we have a lot of breast hormone based breast cancers in our family. Um, I lost my grandmother when I was very young and it was a very pivotal um, change in my personal uh, view of medicine when I lost my grandmother to breast cancer. And I'm a big, um, you know, trying to optimize the pathways, the metabolic pathways first or in conjunction. I'm very much about, um, you know, supporting from a nutrient perspective first and in conjunction, there's some great herbals, there's some great botanicals, but what's the safest or what do you think when a person wants to do hormone replacement therapy? Like there's the, there's been from, from a bias to a trias to running labs, to not running labs, to monitoring, you know, do you, yeah. when a patient comes in and they say, I want to go on some hormones, yeah. are you, what do you think about that? Yeah. So great and big loaded question. I agree with <laughs> that everybody's individual. So I need to understand what would they do with those hormones? Me, mm -hmm. I gave it to them. First of all, only give it in physiologic levels. Physiologic levels does not mean shots, i.e. Yeah. test men can be very complicated because you search yes. and that's very non-physiologic. So I do ne I never do non-physiologic. Uh, pellets to me are of concern because yes. pellets are told, the patient is told and even the doctor is told and shame on the doctor for believing it, that it comes out uh, very sustained and uh, 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 systematically right. true. It surges to non-physiologic levels. In fact, the doctor's trained to not check the levels during the first couple weeks because the truth is they're, they're, they're sky high. Yes. So find that not okay. So you never, you never do, you never do to the body what it's never done. So yes. for instance, giving it only estrogen, you know, that I would, your body never just did estrogen. Um, so I do look at people's individual pathways. I look to see if there's any genetic clearance issues. So in yes. the liver, I always say there's four doors. There's phase one, phase two detox, um, hydroxylation, methylation. Hydroxylation is phase one, methylation is phase two. Methylation could have a genetic defect in there. And I look to make sure they're not struggling. 
Then I call phase three is all your antioxidants. And then I call phase four is glutathione. Yes. So if anybody is struggling with their pathways and I feed the pathway high up, we potentially are going to fuel cancers. So that's a problem. Um, so do I monitor the patient I give hormone to? Yes. I most commonly give a sublingual. First of all, I, I decide what their problem is. What is their actual complaint? If their complaint is vaginal dryness, I may not give a systemic hormone and I might just use a little estrogen vaginally. If their complaint is enough things about their general well-being, their skin, their palpitations, their hot flashes, their sleep, and now their quality of life is really poor, then I say we might use this for a few years to gracefully help you transition. Right. To do it their whole life, not necessarily. Every year it would be individually decided how low can you go and hold your quality of life. Yes. Okay. I want to, I want to punctuate that. Just, just, I, I totally agree with you on the, on the pellets. I, 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 those kind of blow my mind and break my yeah. heart. Um, yeah. I love the, how low can you go and have a maximum quality of life? I love yeah. that. Um, I had a, a, a doctor one time write me a little note. Um, and, and again, I don't prescribe hormones. We work with amazing, you know, physicians that do this, but, um, he said, hey, you know, Haley, this is literally like peeing in the ocean. She's on so such a little amount. And and uh, I said, let's let's talk to her. Let's go. We have an assessment. You know, let's go through the assessment and check the quality of life. And he said, you know, she's on fire. She feels amazing. She's got libido. She's sleeping like a baby. I said, then peeing in the ocean it is. That was my my response back to him. You know, I, I love that. And and what I want you guys to do is this section, what, what the wisdom that Dr. Fields just imparted on us as a community, clip that, record that, listen to that, formulate qu your questions. If you are going in for hormone replacement therapy, what Dr. Fields just said is, I, I mean, that's why I, you know, sneak people in the back door, beg, plead, try so hard. The fact that you just brought that wisdom to our community is ginormous. Um, I, I, I just want to say, wow, like that, that was, that was awesome. I thank you. Thank you. No, that was huge. That I, I know that it's so, it comes so natural to you. It's such, it's just so, it's just spoken through you almost that, but that this, this issue is critical for the women in my community right now and the men, you know, they walk in the door and they're taking these, you know, testosterone injections or women have just been pelleted. And I just, you know, I, I have all, like I said, all the inside words that stay in my brain that I don't say out loud that I want to really bad where I just go, who is taking care of you? And the yeah. best thing that you can do is be empowered. And that segment right there what Dr. Fields just said, I want you to, uh, we will, we will um, transcribe it. It was genius. It was amazing. Uh, you don't have no idea how many women in my community are going to go bonkers. Can I ask you one more? Sure. <laughs> They're having fun. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you. I know. Well, this is crazy. Okay. Thyroid. I just, I, we could, we, and I, I, and I, I'm going to beg and plead that we do another show about each of these two subjects. Um, cause I have chills again. Cause I know I I'm excited for everybody to hear people come in all the time. People in our community are literally in tears. They they're losing their hair. Their eyebrows are thinning. They have cracked heels and they go in and the doctor says, uh, TSH was normal. You're good. It's all in your head. Um, what's a complete panel for thyroid how do we how do we yeah. tell people that they're not with a good teammate they're not being listened to or how can we help them get a good yeah. thyroid workup yeah yeah so first of all if you look at tshs alone which unfortunately if the doctor is only doing that right you're missing you're missing the story um and not only that if you look at tshs it could say to a doctor uh, that the range is 0.4, let's say all the way up to five or six. But if you read endocrine data, it says the patient to be optimized should be TSH is between one and two. Yes. So the problem is, is if a patient comes in and all they do is a TSH and let's say it's four. Yes. The truth is that patient really isn't really optimized. And so there's optimal health and true disease. And we're all about optimizing the patient. So yes. 
So the other thing that's more important is I always tell the patient as I have to compare you to you. So get me an old lab. And what if you were one last year and now you're four, a fourfold yes. change. So you definitely have changed. So that's critical is this is not one point on the graph. Um, I'm watching you over time. That's the beauty of primary care is I've known you for 20 years and I have all that data. Now, of course, a full panel should be free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and antibodies. Because somebody could actually have numbers that look great. Yeah, I'm dancing over here because they, yeah, they, yeah. they, they, need, they need that. And this is the listening to the patient. The patient is saying to you, I do not feel well. Now, if they only came in and you knew them the first time, then you have to believe them. You have to believe them. So that's that's the piece of, hey, you better listen and you better empower. I don't disbelieve the patient when they say, I feel really bad and my hair is thin 50%. They have right. no reason to lie to you. Right. So, 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 so you need to be believed, people. You need, you to, need be to be believed. believed. In this environment, I will make a list of, of the labs that you just said. Is there a gem being on in in practice as long as you've been? If a patient walks in and the doctor says, I'm only going to run TSH, is there some doctor language, some physician magic that a, a patient could say that would encourage the doctor to feel compelled to run a comprehensive look? Besides, yeah. like, let's say they're with... Um, a corporate physician, or they're with a physician, you know, and, and they, they, he says, well, I'm going to run a TSH. Is there any verbiage that could help empower my community that, that would say, gosh, I'd rather you run blank because of blank? Yeah, that's a great question. I almost like the idea of, hey, I had a family member, because if you went far enough, you might be able to say that. <laughs> I had a family member that had Graves or Hashimoto. Love it. I had a family member that it was really missed on and and we have all the same symptoms something with knowledge that look I've been here done this and I, I really need a little more data got it I love um, that I love you that. know maybe I could even empower the patient you know what I do with my patients is because it's ridiculously cheaper is cash pay labs and um, because sometimes what's happening their constriction is they under Kaiser or they're under and they're they're navigating or trying to minimize abuse right? right but like a free t3 in my in my lab a pre-negotiated um, uh, uh, rate a free t3 might be 20 bucks right free t4 is 20 bucks so so what if I empowered the patient to to say worst case if there's any other dilemma I think I think I'd, I'll do that just as a cash pay rate. Um, now patients can, it's crazy how negotiable these are. Like right. it's, like medicine's like used car salesmen anymore. Yeah. Pre-negotiate these rates that are crazy. I get that, I thank you. I tell, I tell my clients all the time and they think I'm nuts. I said, okay, no. find out how much it is. Yeah. Ask them what it's gonna cost. They go in yeah. and they turn over their power. They turn yeah. over their power. I mean, I was, yeah. it, you know, when I was in the hospital a couple of years ago when I got meningitis, you know, I and I'm at UCLA and I've got my, you know, my buddies there and great docs that are integrative, you know, like I had some really good people there that I love and adore. And I'm like, hold on a minute. What are you putting in the IV bag? Why? What's going on? You know, no, thank you. I actually am not nauseous and I don't have constipation. You can negotiate what you're being administered yeah. in the hospital, but yes. definitely financially. And in, there are a very few states. New York is one of them that, you know, there's there's a lot of places that you can go and get labs yourself. So I'm going to use Kaiser as an example. Like I have a, a client that... Um, was on, went to a integrative medicine doctor, they ran labs, um, was on uh, T3 only, only Cytomel. She's got Hashimoto's um, positive uh, antithyroid antibodies, positive TPO, thyroid peroxidase. She's just phenomenal on T3 only. The Kaiser doc said, I won't just give you T3 because we don't have any labs that show that you warrant that. And we said, well then great, run the labs. We don't like to run T3, we're gonna run TSH. Your TSH <laughs> is totally normal. Swear to God, this conversation happened. Your TSH is totally normal. Um, well, yeah, it might be normal because I'm on, at this point, you know, 15 micrograms of T3. 
So the doctor wouldn't run it. I said, let's go pay cash. It was to yeah. your point, it was in the $20, $24, I think it was. And yeah. because that lab was abnormal, then they would go and prescribe. She didn't want to continue to get the T3 prescribed by the integrative doctor because it was at a compounding pharmacy and it was a little more expensive and it was free at, at Kaiser. So I love what you said. Know that you can negotiate with your doctor and you can negotiate prices. People yeah. are scared. I, I don't know if you know from this side of the being the patient side, patients yeah. are scared to death to talk to their doctors. My husband, we have phenomenal insurance. He was with the sheriff's department. He ended up, as you know, hospitalized, had a brain infection. All this stuff was going on and he was just paying the bills. And I said, no, 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 no. We need to call the office, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and we need to, we need to do that. And, and the same thing with, with medication too, you know, um, even the compounding pharmacies. So we we have compounding pharmacies that if a person's on Natrothroid or Westroid and they're on, you know, a, a half a grain, I, I said, call them and ask if you can buy a grain. They're, they're split in half, split it and take your half a grain. You know, right. it was so much more cost effective. So that that is amazing. Yeah. And that's, that's a, a gem. Um, I just wanna tell, do you have any questions for me? Anything that you um, want to bring up, I I just want our community to know. Um, I'm gonna beg and plead, guys. I will beg. I will send shakes. I will send bars. I will beg and plead to get Dr. Fields back because, as you can tell, why I'm obsessed and in awe and privileged to have this beautiful human being in my life. Um, I just am so happy that I can share you with my community. That makes me Thanks. very happy. So Thanks. if you have any, any questions for me, you guys make sure that you are taking care of your skin. I am a huge sacred skin advocate. Dr. Fields, um, do you mind if I give that coupon code to my daughter's friends in college? No, oh, you do whatever you have to do. <laughs> I figured if I asked you on camera, you'd probably say yes. But that's uh, it's FMD skin, and and everybody is gonna uh, you know I'll pull it all together. You guys will have all the data. If you have questions for Dr. Fields, please post them. Um, we will we will make uh, this available on our website, also HaleyPomeroy.com. We will have Dr. Field's website available. And and Jackie, do you have any questions questions for no, me? No, I, I it's probably more of a comment, which is I take to heart all the struggles that you're trying to help your community with. And I feel sad. I mean I'm part of a system that I feel is a little broken, but hopefully maybe I can empower your community to help revamp. Yes. Um, find their power in it. I, I feel sad that medicine, I, I have always practiced very differently. I'm happy with what I've done. I see a lot of doctors um, and, and coach them into shifting gears um, and stepping out of what I call the, the rat race and, um, and pausing and so they can run a practice where they listen more. And really, that's the main thing I hear you sad about. Yeah. Oh, and you're being the voice of your community and um and that breaks my heart because uh we really could be of better service i think if we get uh your patients empowered and more patients empowered really the truth is the docs will be forced to to switch it up and yeah. and so that's the revolution we should do we should yeah. do a revolution and and we should help patients realize they're part of that in every way. Same with the environmental revolution. Yes. We need them realize they have the power to not toxify this beautiful system they have. Yes. Because fortunately, we got to live here. Yes. They have choice. Yes. And just, I just want to really roll and run with it and continue your mission to help, you know, your larger audience. It's, it's a great thing. Well, thank you for saying that. And I, I felt like I was, you know, finding myself being in, in, you know, owning integrative healthcare clinics and stuff that the diet space was just, it made me furious. I found myself so angry because it was so broken and people were being guilted and shamed and, and, and the solution to getting healthy was abstaining and, and food is bad. And, you know, and I just, right. so I said, okay, you know, when there's, when something's broken, the only way to fix it is to show up. 
yeah. and, and to provide solution. And I think it's the same thing, Dr. Fields, in, in medicine right now, you know, you're, you're seeing a system that's broken and, and, you know, I'm a fixer. That's what I always say. I'm a fixer. So I had to show up and fix something because I was, and, and, you yeah. know, I had, I decided to write a book. I'm dyslexic. It didn't even make sense on any level. Um, and I think you're a healer. And I think that you are so talented in healing the patient. But I think taking this next step and creating a solution um, and, and this line is going to reach so many more people than you can reach in clinical practice. But I hope that these kinds of conversations and empowering the patient is going to help heal the medical community. And I know yeah. that you're going to be a huge integral part in that as you yeah. always are. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. We will continue this conversation guys. We're going to want to know your questions and um, you know, we, we will be, uh, together for many, many, many more moons, Dr. Fields. And I cannot thank you enough for all that you've brought to my community. They mean the world to me. You mean the world to me. And this uh, marriage of the two is just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. So thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to another inspiring episode of Power on Your Plate with Haley Pomroy. Please remember to share the amazing science and tools with someone you love. The more we know, the more we all lift our global health together. Visit www.haleypomroy.com to get notes from today's show and to take your education and health to a new level of success and happiness. Information on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for the advice provided by your physician or other healthcare professional or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging. You should not use the information on this podcast for diagnosing or treating a health problem or disease or prescribing any medication or other treatment. You should always speak with your physician or other healthcare professional before taking any medication or nutritional, herbal, or homeopathic supplement, or adopting any treatment for a health problem. If you have or suspect that you have a medical problem, promptly contact your healthcare provider. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking professional advice because of something you've heard on this podcast. Information provided on this podcast and the use of any products or services purchased as a result of this podcast does not create any type of professional relationship between you and any of the associates affiliated with this podcast. Information and statement regarding dietary supplements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.